Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are. Welcome to the 2024 virtual admission in information session for our program Chinese Gap Year in Taipei, or CGY. This is a young program established in 2020 by our world-renowned parent institution, for, uh, who ha which has over 60 years of history and teaching experience the International Chinese Language Program, or ICOP, which is also part of the National Taiwan, Taiwan University, or NTU, the most prestigious university in Taiwan. My name is Li Huijun. I'm, the, I'm a Chinese instructor and also the Division Director of International Affairs and Admission at ICOP. And this is uh, Ms. Zhang Yuanrong. She's the CGY program coordinator. We will be your host today, introducing the program and answering your question. And joining us today are two of our alums from last year, and Masato and Aika. And they will share their experience with you uh, before we wrap this session up by taking your questions. And it's now 9.31, so we expect to end the session at 10.30 today if we don't get too carried away answering your questions. So before we get started, I'd like to thank everyone on behalf of our entire staff at CGY and ICOP uh, for signing up and actually showing up today on this Friday night or Saturday morning, it depends on where you are, which is a very big time investment on us and we are very grateful. We are also very excited to see people joining us today from all parts of the world. This is really like what we are doing at CGY. So everyone come to the same place for the same goal that is learning about the Chinese language and culture and doing it with friends from a vast variety of backgrounds, sharing precious time, precious weekend with friends from all corners of the world. And we are very proud to be the one to provide the platform for this opportunity. So. Now it's about time, so that's uh, that your own takeover, and she will introduce the overview of the program. Hello, everyone. My name is Yuan Rong Zhan. You can just call me Yuan Rong. Um, so I'm going to talk about the program overview of CG1. <coughs> so let's take a look. So firstly, you can see an example of a two-week schedule from the winter quarter. So. Um, Usually, we will have three hours of classes every morning. Uh, all the classes are from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. <coughs> and so right now, let's take a look at the schedule. Um, first, you can see the quarter event pre-departure briefing. When we have that, it means we have a quarter event at the weekend. Yeah, and then next, you can see the elective course. The elective course, they are cultural classes and skill classes for you to learn something and they usually hold uh, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And next one you can see on Friday, we have this review test <coughs> and the language mission. And for the review test, for in these two days, usually we wouldn't have any uh, classes. We will have the test and then it's finish of the day. And then for the language mission, we will go somewhere, which I will show you a little later uh, with the teachers. Yeah, and next one you can see here, there's also an elective course. And the elective courses, which you can choose from a few, I will show you a little later too. So this is the overview of two weeks. So let's take a look at what events and activities we have. So firstly, like we talked about before, uh, we have these um, bi-weekly events. So first first one is the language missions. So let's take a look at the language missions. For the language missions, we have different places to go every quarter. So this is an example from 2023 to 24 for quarter. So we went to Longshan Temple, Nanmen Traditional Market, Da Dao Chen, which are places that local people would go. And we're not just going there and see stuff. We're actually doing things. That's why it's commissions. So um, we will give our students um, so some learning sheets for you to prepare with before. Like one day before you go there, you will get to make some preparation. And then um, at the day, our teachers will lead students from different different language proficiencies. 
Yeah, and for of course for the different language proficiencies, you will have different learning sheets as well. Yeah, and then you will be able to actually learn something, talk to local people, and of course practice while you are learning right now. Okay, so let's go back to let's go back to the events. Of course, we have reviews and tests to check if you are actually learning, not just playing. Yeah, and our Liao will talk about it a little later. And let's next one, let's take a look at the excursions. So for excursions, we have day trip. So one day trip, one quarter event, which will be three to four days, and one to two to di three days trips. And these um, each quarter, we will have three of these um, excursions. So let's take a look what we had before. So in fall quarter, uh, 2023, we went to Keelong. Um, so two of our teachers, they take the student, they took the students to swim, hiking, and of course went to the night market in Taiwan. Yeah. And next one is the <clears throat> Hunter School. This is the quarter event. Um, so uh, Hunter School is um, a place students can experience um, the indigenous people's life in Taiwan. Yeah, and next one is another uh, two to date two uh, another event, which is the uh, Donghe Tribe. It's also um, a place to experience indigenous people's in um, life in Taiwan, and of course, in, in experience their work and their food. Yeah, so let's go back to this page. So la lastly, we have this cultural and skill courses. Um, let me show you what we had on 2023-2044 quarter. So for these courses, um, we had firstly Kung Fu, and the first one here is Tai Chi and Guo Shu. So these are kind of like Chinese Kung Fu. You, we will have um, around six to eight students learn together, and we will have our teacher, we will invite teachers from um, not, of course, not from our teachers, it's like outside, uh, professional teachers. And next one we have art classes, which are Shu Fa, calligraphy, and Guo Hua, uh, Chinese traditional paintings. And lastly, we have skill courses. And for skill courses, they are not necessarily um, related to Chinese culture. This is um, a way we want students to use the language they are learning to experience um, learning in this language, not just learning the language, but use it. Okay, so that's it for the program overview. Let's invite Li Lao to talk about the curriculum and pedagogy. Yeah. Thank you, Yan Rong. And now I'm back explaining the curriculum and pedagogy. So besides all those fun, exciting activities Yan Rong just mentioned, and the other pillar of the program is our language training, which is something we really pride ourselves on. And you should, you could say that we are a serious, intense language program that's having a little bit too much fun, or we are a fun summer camp that really wants to teach you a language. So how exactly do we help our students to learn their language, the Chinese language. This is a uh, student's <coughs> daily class schedule would look like on the right hand side of the screen. So each student will have three hours of class every day, two being group classes and one being individual. And uh, there are only four students at most in the group class. So the teacher staff to student ratio is two to one or lower for the whole program. The individual class is, rel is relatively more flexible in the sense that teacher can spend as much time as needed to correct your uh, errors and last time on the things you've already mastered because you don't have any classmates. But this, uh, this individual class is paired with another group class. <coughs> Here, uh, isn't uh, as your core course, so it's not like the individual class is so flexible that it does not have any direction or structure. And the last class, or the the other group class, is the complementary class, which complements your core core course. 
and the complementary class is normally at the same level as your core course. But as we design all our students' class schedule with the with meticulous care according to their proficiency level with uh, with the smallest increments possible. So if you are actually a notch above or lower than the average within one level, your it would be reflected on our head structure head instructor's choice of your complementary course. That, may, that is, if you have a core course at level three, your complementary class course might be at level two or three or four. So together, these three classes will form a perfect environment for you to be exposed to language inputs at the suitable, suitable level for you repeatedly. And because of this intricacy of uh, class scheduling logistics, we do not take time uh, class time request from students because but all the class will be done by two p.m. and then you can go on to do those cultural or skill classes. And as for the assessment, the placement and exit exams are proficiency tests. <coughs> so, which is just to help us uh, get a little bit more know a little bit more about your proficiency and put you into the put you at the right place in the class and find out how much you improve after when you leave the program. And the achievement test, which is the in-test test or the review session, which uh, Yuan Rong just showed you on the weekly schedule, and uh, they happen by week, uh, every other week, so around three times every quarter. And one mid there's one midterm exam and a final presentation. The final presentation is a five minute speech in front of everyone in the program teacher and students, so it's not just your classmates. And some students actually dress up for the occasion, so it's quite a big thing. It usually it happens on the last day of the quarter, every quarter. <clears throat> so uh, at, at the CGY, uh, we follow the uh, pedagogical tradition from ICOP and we emphasize oral practice as a core component. We believe that constant oral practice will consolidate and facilitate the advancement in listening, reading, writing, as well as speaking. So somewhat similar to our first language acquisition, but more close to the way we learn or practice for a new sport or a musical instrument. So muscle memory actually, actually plays a big part in language learning than we would normally imagine. So we provide students ample and equal uh, opportunity to speak in class, and we do expect and demand them to speak. So when students prepare for class, they should also prepare by speaking with, the mouth, with their mouth until it becomes almost a reflex, instead of merely by reading silently with their eyes. So for three hours of class, they should prepare up to four or 4.5 hours at home the day before. So when they come to class, the teacher would set up scenarios by speaking to create the environment for the student to interact with everyone in the class using the sentence pattern they've already learned by themselves at home. Since reading and understanding and memorizing the grammar or vocab is something the learner can do by themselves and and the uh, uh, interaction it's actually interaction especially meaningful and desired interaction that is when a instructor is call, actually called for so every class every day is a speaking test and that it's the true meaning of deliberate practice so this is why we do not open textbooks in class. So students should be respond should be able to respond naturally if they spend enough time preparing the day before. So those who have and has not prepared would lose their chance to speak because they might spend too much time pausing in class while it would be actual time for others to practice. And there would be no aud audition audit option for all courses. So it would not matter if we have 20 students in one class, but again, because of the complex arrangement for the teachers and the students' class schedule, 
and the classes uh, the classes are small so the teachers would design the class activities according to the number and the proficiency of each member so one addition random addition to a class would uh, interfere the flow of the course there's a we, we often see at other language uh, language learning center that when the class is over all the learner once they step out of the classroom, they would inter uh, they would exci excited and to see to spend time hanging out with their friends from all over the world. And however, they just throw away what they just practice in class and interact with their friends in the lingua franca of the, of the world of the current world that is English. So we see that as a waste. So why not take this chance to practice and turn? Chinese into something you're actually comfortable comfortable with when you communicate. So this is the pledge we would ask students to sign at the beginning of the program. So one, once you sign the program, whenever you step into our uh, class building, you have to speak only Mandarin Chinese. And as for the attendance pl pledge, um, missing one day or one class is already missing a lot. So miss. So missing 20% or literally one day every week is, would also actually affect your visa status. So since this is a government regulation. So, and we will send a reminder to the student who is closing on this limit, but it's a student's own responsibility to keep track of their absence. So, how do you get into this amazing program? This is how you apply. And if you are, if you would like to join us on our summer program, you have to be uh, at least 60 years old. And if you are 17 or you have already graduated from uh, high school, you can apply for our summer and uh, academic year program. And recently we get questions uh, to, from two individuals asking if enrolled college student can also apply for CGY and after an internal discussion the answer is yes if you don't if you enjoy being the big brother or big sister in the program you are more than welcome to apply and on the right hand side is the material what you should prepare when you apply for our uh, program which can be found uh, on our website and there are also instructions. So if you encounter any uh, problem when getting online, getting on our online portal, please write, send us an email and we will help you. And here's one thing I'd like to bring to your attention is that for the ap application fee, 100 US dollar, if you mention the name of one of our alumni, either from ICOP or CGY, in your statement of purpose, this fee can be waived. So this is, this is a little gift for you or for you to give someone else when you become a CGY alumni. And, and the admission decision will be announced in two weeks sent directly to you via email after the completion of the application, which means, uh, which includes the relevance letter. And this is the date of uh, our program uh, applications and delights this year, which can also be found on, on our website. And uh, our default design for our programs are one summer program and one academic year program. But we, we, we do encourage you to stay for three quarters because we design different activities and trips for each quarter. However, we do accept applic uh, applications for only one or two quarters. We, we have some students coming, applying for only one quarter, but two weeks into this quarter, they decided to stay for another one. And now this part is uh, people have been asking about. And unfortunately, ICOP or CGY currently do not offer our own uh, scholarship, but he, uh, this is the one scholarship that we've heard, that we uh, have students coming with. So this is the Taiwan 
MOE, the Ministry of Education's Hua Yu Enrichment Scholarship. And this, these are the basic uh, guidelines you can find online. So you have to be above age 18 or older. And these are the materials. Uh, and these are the basic guidelines you can find online. So there is a QR code you can scan and then find things on, the, on their website. Uh, we do recommend you to contact your local techco office, which is Taipei Economic and Cultural Office or Cultural Center or Cultural Representative Office in your area. This office is, uh, is in charge of matters that normally uh, an embassy would do for other countries. And the reason why uh, you should contact them is because I heard the uh, detailed, like the date, including the dates or required materials, is different from uh, office to office. So you should uh, check with them. We have no authority to decide the application procedures for them. Okay, so this is our the introduction for our program and. Now you already know the overview and the structure from the teachers and the administration sites of our program. And it, now it's time to find out what the students think about their experiences studying with us. OK, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm Masato Hall. Um, I'm half Japanese, half American. I grew up in Japan until I was 15. I attended high school in the USA. Um, and then now I study in National Taiwan University, a uh, freshman student as a philosophy major. So, um, I attended CGY uh, starting the fall of 2022 and continued throughout 2023. Um, and I'd like to share you my experience, uh, my experiences and what I think about CGY. So, First, I have four things that really um, helped me, uh, that CGY really helped me throughout the whole year. So, um, the first thing is the synergy between uh, language learning and cultural learning. So, I think as you have seen in the previous slides, um, CGY really does a good job in uh, kind of uh, embedding cultural learning in the context of language learning. And I mean, language learning and cultural learning, they come together. That's kind of a cliche, but it's, it's very much true. And you can't get much of the culture part in your home country. So if you really want a uh, experience of being in the Chinese culture, uh, CGI definitely is the way to go. Uh, so that was one surprise for me because I was only uh, going for the language. Um, at the start when I applied, I just wanted to get my language level uh, high enough to attend college, but uh, I, was, I was pretty much amazed by uh, how, how cultural things got, and that was really nice. So next, uh, what helped me throughout the year? Textbooks, learning materials, and the teachers. So first of all, the teachers, they have a very, uh, they're, they're all very they have a very strong academic background. They, they, they know a lot about education. They really know a lot about ch the Chinese language. And when you're taking their classes, you just, you're just always amazed by how much they know about things, the, the amount of knowledge. And that was always shocking to me. Um, and then the textbooks. Uh, you might think, what's so special about textbooks? But um, the thing is, first you start with elementary material daily conversation um, and then you kind of start move up moving up to advanced materials and then at one point uh, you, you, you start learning classical Chinese and that's very special about CGI um, you might think classical Chinese well I learned that sounds a bit boring but and I wouldn't learn classical English but classical Chinese it turns out that it's very very essential to understanding the, the Chinese cultural spirit and also even understanding daily conversation because everyone in Taiwan or China, they, they learn a lot of Chinese, classical Chinese throughout their education and they, they reference a lot of um, 
works of literature, and so it's it's very very useful to know, and it it's a very enriching experience. Um, and I I got the I had the opportunity to learn a lot of classical Chinese, and at the end right now I'm in college I'm reading a lot of philosophy, and I have to read a lot of classical Chinese、uh, throughout my courses. If I didn't have CGI, I probably would have failed all my courses. So I'm I'm very very grateful about that. So that's that's second point.、Um, the the learning materials, and then there is the social aspect of CGI.、Um, so basically, when you get to CGI, when you're with a group of people, you live in the same dorm, you go to the same school, and after school you you go explore Taiwan with them. You might. Go eat out with them, and it's it's very very. There's a very tight community that you're together with, and since you're so far away from your home country, you might get homesick. But with all these friends around you, it's kind of very comforting,、um, and you get to cultivate really deep friendships、uh, because you just spend a lot of time with them.、Um, when you're in high school or college, it's 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 it might be a bit hard to. Have very long-lasting friendships because of the time you interact with them. You, everything's kind of moving around. But when you're here, you're you're with this group of friends. You get to know them really well, and that was an unexpected、uh, aspect of CGI that I got a lot out of. So, yeah, I still keep in touch with some of my friends to this day, and that was really nice. <clears throat> so the fourth thing that helped me. Uh, throughout CGI, is the balance between structure and freedom.、Uh, so, as as Li Lao just said before, it is a very intensive、uh, language learning process. But at the same time, there's enough freedom. You get you get a lot of vacations, you get a lot of、um, opportunities to go explore. There's enough structure, and、uh, there's enough freedom that you don't feel really strangled. But at the same time, there's enough structure so that you won't kind of wander away, wander off into doing whatever you want. So it's a, it's a, there's a very nice balance there. So I, I just felt like、um, I felt free enough to want to continue this rigorous process of language learning, which is very, very nice. Yeah. So that's those are the things that really helped me throughout CGI.、Um, Uh, but I guess the main question for you is: Is CGI for you? And I want to talk about that a little bit. And so I want to talk about two things, which is first is the workload, and then second is I guess breaking out of the foreigner bubble. So workload,、um, as as I've said repeatedly, it is a intensive course. So, and、um, you might have to study. Like seven to eight hours of Chinese a day. That's that's quite a bit of Chinese. So, I mean, if you're very interested in the language and culture, it's definitely the way to go. But if you're a little bit uncertain about whether you can handle the work handle the workload,、um, that might be something to consider、um, because you're gonna have to make an effort to keep up, and you'll get a lot of out of a lot out of it. You'll you'll have a lot of.、Um, You'll really grow uh, fast, uh, but it's still a lot of work. So I just want to mention that. And then the second point:、um, breaking out of the foreigner bubble. Foreigner bubble. So what what does that really mean?、Um, so this is something I experienced in CGI, which is that you have a very tight, close group of friends, and that's very very nice. It's very.、Uh, As I said, it's a very nice experience. But at the same time, the issue is that you get very comfortable to the point where you interact with teachers in the school. And once you're outside of the school, you interact with your friends, and then that just creates a sort of this CGI bubble, I guess. And if you really want to interact with the local population, you'll you'll have to step out of this cycle.、Um, And CGI helped me to a certain extent when this happened. They they realized the phenomenon as well, and they recommended us to participate in club activities offered by Taiwan University. And I went to the Zen Club, and it was very fun. I mean, it's just sitting, but that that was the beauty of it.、Um, 
and I got to make some friends there, uh, and I discovered how Chinese is different in the classroom and in real life, uh, because that happens in language learning. So uh, that might be something that would take a bit of courage to do, um, stepping outside of this, stepping outside of CGY. And eventually, after you gained enough confidence in CGY in the language or in culture or just in terms of getting around, you might want to start doing that. And um, I'm sure CGY would help you, but you'll still have to try. And so workload and that that stepping out of the bubble part, uh, those two things will be challenging, um, definitely. It was challenging for me. Um, and it probably would be for you. So uh, you might want to, I don't know, think about that a little bit. Uh, if you're up for the cha challenge, it's definitely, you, sh you should do it. And yeah, so that's, that's basically all for me. Um, at the end, I, I want to say I was very, very lucky to have the opportunity to attend CGY. Uh, and I, I personally see no reason uh, to not go if you have the opportunity and you're very, very, very interested in Chinese culture, Chinese language. So, um, I definitely recommend um, coming to this place. It's a, it's a very life-changing experience in some ways. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now it's time for Aika and she will speak in Japanese. 皆さんこんにちは。私は2022年から2023年の間3学期間CGYプログラムに参加していた森下愛香です。今日は CGYプログラムの授業は生徒が2人から4人に対して先生が1人というような少人数制なので大人数制の授業に比べて授業内で自分の発言回数が格段に多いです。実際に私は生徒と先生が2人対1、また人数の都合で先生と1対1の授業も
私は現地の小学校へ行って小学校の子たちと文化交流をするボランティアに参加しました私はこの CGY プログラムに参加して本当に多くの経験をすることができました私は今台湾大学の正規留学生として中国語文学科で勉強をしています今の私があるのも CGY のおかげだと思っています良いクラスメイトや先生方に囲まれて教室という枠を飛び越えた授業に参加しここでしかない一年を過ごすことができましたあまり多くは話せませんでしたが CGI は本当に良いプログラムですでもそれはやっぱり皆さんが自分で経験してみないとわからないことだと思いますこれから CGI へ入学する皆さんが充実した学校生活を過ごせることを期待していますありがとうございました Thank you, Aika. Now it's time to take your questions. Okay, I'll share my first. So, firstly, I've seen on news actually、um, Taiwan is the third biggest country of the、um, vegetarian popularities. So, basically, you can find a lot of vegetarian restaurants in, in Taiwan. Yeah. <laughs> Masato is also、uh, vegetarian, right?、Okay. Yeah.、Uh, so, as, as for、uh, the details, I, I, I'm vegetarian and I,、um, I was throughout the CGI experience. And what I found out was that, first of all, when you find stuff to eat,、uh, you go to the school cafeteria and the, the, you see a really, really, really long line. And there's a vegeta- vegetarian buffet. Um, it's very cheap, about a dollar or maybe two dollars or so. And then you get a very, very large plate of、um, foods that you can choose and、uh, rice. And there, there's just a lot of options in Taiwan. And it is true that a lot of traditional food can be meat based.、Uh, you can still find a various、um, uh, set of cuisines that you can、uh, try. And for CGY, when you're on a trip, Uh, they still offer vegetarian options. For example, when everyone's eating、uh, some sort of、uh, food,、uh, they give you a vegetarian alternative. So it's very flexible.、Um, and it's, it's, it was not an issue to be vegetarian, and I didn't feel really,、uh, I didn't feel like I wasn't, I, I was having a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I don't think it's a dis- disadvantage. I think you can still hang out with your classmates, or your classmates will invite you to the dorm. So、mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter. Do you want to share your experience? Right. So, I mean, depending on the location, it might be a little bit far to get to school. So that might be a little bit of a disadvantage. But I think, I think in terms of、uh, like social life or language learning, it definitely won't be an issue. I, I had a few friends, or I had. I guess I had a friend, and we lived、um, in a、mm. different place as well. So it, it wasn't a problem for all of us, my friends, or myself, or Aika as well. So. Thank you again for everyone for joining us today and really show up、uh, on the weekend. And if you have any more questions that you just think,、uh, think of after this session, you can always send us an email. And thank you today.、So Hope to see you at CGY in the future, this summer or this fall. Okay.